Hello, I'm Nigerian journalist Kemi Amalulu Olulayer, and this is Surviving Devido. Today is January 15th, 2019. It's a Tuesday morning. As the documentary goes on, I'll date the documentary. What is Surviving Devido? A personal story between me and a good friend. A story I have not been able to tell for 26 years. A story that the world must hear. A story that Davido must hear. Davido is a very famous pop star, a musician from Nigeria, but he's actually an American citizen born in Atlanta, Georgia. Born to two fabulous people. His mother, the subject of my documentary, Dr. Veronica Imadi Deliki. That's her official title. I call her Vero. Vero was from Edo State. Beautiful lady, married to power and money, and the same power and money killed her. Many people have been critical of this documentary, but in Nigeria, where we don't have a constitution that actually works and protects journalists, I've gotten threats, I've gotten a lot of abuse, I've gotten a lot of trolling, but I'm a very, very determined journalist. I speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. This is the story they don't want you to hear. Who are they? The larger-than-life Adeliki family. Where money, power, business, and the quest for everything matters before family. Some of the things I'm going to say in this documentary, DeVito himself never knew. A few days ago, I told people on Instagram that I babysat him once. And that if this young man knew I babysat him... He would never see what he said to me. And this documentary was triggered by a series of events that made me to come out now and talk about it. The last documentary I made in 2014 was about my father. And it was free. When you have something inside you, talk about it. You can live forever with pain. Pain, the Adelike family, witness is also my pain. I was in parts of it that they did not even know. And in this documentary, they'll find out. They will find out. They'll find out. They will find out. It's a little emotional for me. I've been criticized. I've been threatened. I've been trolled. But I will speak out. As a journalist, an award-winning one, I have done a lot of work that Nigerians don't even know. I've done several documentaries in Canada, gun violence and more. But on this very documentary, it's personal. This is the story of Veronica Imadi Adelike. V-I-A. Who is she? Veronica Adelike, I will call Vero on this documentary. She was married to a very, very powerful businessman. But before he became a powerful businessman, they lived in America and grew up in the same neighborhoods as anybody else that's Nigerian living in Atlanta, Georgia, and just working day by day. At the same time, even his brother was there, Demola Deliki, a senator in Nigeria who ran for governor and lost, who was disgraced that he didn't have high school credentials, YEC, and that he tried to bribe somebody to make it up for him. Lost the governorship in disgrace and is more famous for his dancing at parties. He's a fat senator, obese, whatever you want to call it, and he works it out. 
and they called him the dancing senator. Deji, Demola Isiaka. Isiaka Adelike has passed away. He also died of a drug overdose. Accidental. Where a nurse injected him with protopine and diazepam on board. I'm a pharmacist, journalist, and PR specialist. As a pharmacist, if you call yourself a nurse and you inject somebody with protopine with a diazepam IV running on the same line, you killed them. And you killed them on purpose. For me personally, I was detained by the federal government on a different case. And when I came out of the prison, I read the story, I surveyed, I investigated it. Many people didn't want me to go further and said, it's all over leave it alone, I discovered that that nurse was working for someone. That nurse injected Governor Senator Isiaka Adeliki on purpose. He was murdered. Yes. Sahara reporters reported about the nurse calling him a quack nurse. You're not a quack nurse when you put protopine and inject it into an IV that diazepam Valium is running into. You know what you're doing. There was a curse in the Adeliki family. When Isiaka died, his brother in America, Demola, came home, ran for office to replace him in the Senate, which was a sympathy vote, and PDP, his party, thought that they were back. Dimala won the election. After he won the election, he wasn't satisfied. The curse of power and greed in the Adeliki family drove him to become governor, and he wanted to run. So he ran for governorship, and the whole messy stuff came out about his education in the United States. He said he graduated from one university. The university said he never graduated, but he attended. The lies and the disgrace was too much. Dimala lost, and he's back in the Senate. And I believe he has to run again to win that on February 16th, 2019. Back to Vero. Veronica Adeliki married Adedeji Adeliki, who is known as a big businessman in Nigeria today, the chairman of Pacific Energy, an oil and gas company with all his children, nephews, all in the board, including Davido, the music star. Well, Pacific Energy is a successful company. Yeah, there are a few complaints from employees on how they're treated. I've seen them come across investigative journalism sectors. But at the end of the day, we're going to move backwards before Pacific Energy. Deji Adelike was known as one of IBB's boys. This documentary is going to be speaking in the Nigerian way. And I mean Nigerian way because if you're watching this documentary from abroad or you're not Nigerian and you're not familiar with the Adelike family, then you'll have to do more investigations on what I'm saying. What Nigerians will know what I'm talking about. Deji was one of IBB's boys. When you say IBB's boys, who's IBB? Ibrahim Babangida. Nigeria's eight-year military dictator. Babangida, who's a very good friend of this family, is a very generous person. He's very kind to people who are loyal to him. When I mean kind, he likes to give out gifts. Some of those gifts are gifts that he has access to. I am not a fan of giving oil and gas gifts to Nigerians. In what they call oil blocks, Marian Babangida, his late wife, had a tailor, a designer who made all her clothes. Marian became Nigeria's, she started the whole trend of the first lady. Following Shalakija was that tailor. She got oil blocks when she left Abuja, when they all left after the eight years. She invested those oil blocks, which she says she got in faith, and she became a billionaire. Notwithstanding Deji Adelike Devido's father, who was also one of IBB boys, and he got oil blocks too. He turned the oil blocks into massive businesses. Oil and gas company, 
a university called Adelike University. Many people have graduated from that university. It's a great university, a private one. Tuition ain't free. Tuition ain't cheap. A delicate university, a lot and a lot of multi-million dollar businesses. He's very fabulously wealthy. Houses, cars abroad, at home, in other countries. Oil and gas money is big money in Nigeria. It's not chicken change. And there's been questions about people who get oil blocks. Isn't that Nigeria's money that they're spending? Well, yes. But many of them will tell you I got it in good faith. Everybody has a way of connecting in Nigeria. The guy that's running for the APC in Iowa State, Bayou Adelabu, worked at the Central Bank of Nigeria. How did he get there? As an investigative journalist, I'll tell you, Bayou got there through Arishikola, another big businessman who worked a lot for the federal government on contracts. Is that to say that's bad? No. If I go to Dangote and say, Dangote, get me in that job, and he gets me that job, it's not bad. But when you have money, Deji had money. They call him Papaolo, meaning the father of money. When you have money, well, it gets too much. The quest for more money happens. If you're holding 100,000, the quest to have one million becomes the goal. If you're holding 100 million, the quest to have one billion is a goal. That's how it was with Deji Adelike, the most successful one in the Adelike family and Vero's husband, Davido's father. Veronica died in March of 2003. Davido was 10 going on 11. I was 39 years old. Digi was 39 years old going on 40. On that day would have been a good day to celebrate. At the stroke of midnight, Deji turned 40. March 6th, I think. 2003. Like I said, I was 39 and mine was the very next year, 2004. I celebrated big in Atlanta at the Grand Hyatt Hotel with Whitney Houston and a lot of other stars that celebrated with me. Phenomenal year. But on my 40th birthday, Vero was not there. The woman I met in Atlanta, in a mall, became friends, found out we were living on the same street. And she was pregnant with her first child. And my second child was going to be one. My second child, Laddie, was, let's see. I want to illustrate this very well. Laddie was born on the 22nd of November, 91. This is a period called Thanksgiving in America, where people thank God, you know, for where they are today and everything else you want to be thankful for. Modeled out of the pilgrims in America that came to settle. So that time between the 19th and the 27th is a holiday period. Now, my son was born on the 22nd of November, 91. Davido was born on the 21st of November, 92. So when my son was about to turn one, Vera was about to give birth to Davido. I do remember meeting a pregnant woman, and I do remember friends on the streets, other mothers, and I do remember when she went into labor. Labor started on the 19th, Davido, if you're listening or watching. On the 19th, and then the 21st, she had the baby. Yeah, I saw her on the 20th of November. Okay, but I had a birthday party to do the next day, the 22nd for that day. So I just decided to see her and the baby came the next day. So that kind of stuff kind of haunts me 
when I remember the 19th to the 22nd of that year, 92. And I remember it because that 19th is when she went into labor. Well, on the 19th of November 2013, that whole incident of going into labor for Vero repeated itself. November 19th, 2013, a baby girl was born here in Ibadan, Nigeria. Her name is Mitchell Anulu Akbo Adeleke. That will be Vero's first grandchild. Fathered by Davido Adeleke at 21 years old. Davido was an aspiring, upcoming music star. 21. Happy, fame, and then recklessness. Baby, who wants a baby now? He has never accepted that child. Today, Michel Anuoluakbo Adeleke is a five-year-old girl, beautiful, and looks like her family members and Davido. Light skin, because her mother is, but the Adeleke also have a trail or a trait of light skin people. That little girl is under my care now. Her mother, Ayatomi de Grace Labinger, the daughter of a famous university professor, Professor Justin Labinger, who passed away when Ayo was probably about six, seven in 2001. And their mother, Rocco Labinger, has raised both her daughters, Titi and Ayo, alone. The breadwinner was gone. They went deep into poverty. Rockwell was a school teacher and she now had to raise two children. Said she could not send them both to university at the same time. So one had to work, one had to go to college. Titi went to college, Ayo went to work. As Ayo went to work, she worked at a club in Ibado, Nigeria called GQ Nightclub. In GQ nightclub, a lot of the waiters and servers were female. David had just finished a concert in Ibadan and came there with his entourage. The entourage that Davido carries around these days is different from that time. It was basically his cousins, all of them, Shino, B-Red, Bayo, Adeleke, Wally, his brother. Today they have massive bodyguards and a lot of thugs and whatnot. I even heard members of cults follow them around. Whatever he wants, everybody has their own level of security. So do I. We all have thugs. At the end of the day, when he came to GQ nightclub, he spotted a beautiful woman. He liked what he saw and told somebody, bring me that waitress. Like he was ordering a drink. The waitress came to him. Oh, hi. Oh, Davido, blah, 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 blah. And the rest is history. Come hang out with us. Davido is known for club hopping. Club hopping is when you leave a club, go to the next club. We all remember Davido club hopping when his friend Tagbo died, suffocating a car after they drank and had a contest. At the end of the day, ayo followed Davido to another club. From that other club, of course, she had already checked out her, her job at GQ City Battle. So she was off the payroll and she was going either home or with a patron of the club, Davido. We know how Diddy sang that song. From the club to the hotel, you know, that's how they call it, hotel. Men discount women in America, call them hoes. Hoes to the hotel. So I have something against going to the hotel with an, any man anyway, but that's the way prostitution is practiced in Nigeria and everywhere else, right? Everything's done in the hotel. Aya is very classy, very reserved. She doesn't talk much. She's on Instagram, Aya Labinjo, L-A-B-I-N-J-O-H. She posts every two weeks. She's not a social media person. She's on Facebook, that's it. And of course, her personal private WhatsApp. 
She joined Instagram on my insistence. It said she should learn it. And she liked the fact that it was photos. So, you can follow her at Ayo Labinjo, L A B I N J O H. Ayo went to the hotel with Devito. What happened at the hotel was stun you. She had a news conference, which I represented her in. How she came to meet me, how she knew me, how our, cross, how our paths crossed on November 9th, 2018, will be the next chapter of Surviving DeVito. Veronica and Maria Delica, my friend Vero, the little girl Mitchell, the connection between the birth of Davido, 19th, his mother went into labor, delivered him on the 21st, and his daughter was born on that very same 19th. You will hear it in chapter two. How Vero died, the curse in the Adelike family, Deji Adelike, and how the quest for money, power, business ruined a woman. The restrictions, the possession, and how Vero became an ordinary possession. The phone calls she made to me in America when she had left for Nigeria and they were living here. How she couldn't go out to do simple things. The hairdresser, the nil, the stylist. How she forced herself to get a job at a university and be a lecturer just to go out that door. How she created the music empire. Yeah, Vero actually created a label, a record label and a band. The band used to play around town. She controlled the band. She would even sing. It was her band. That was the sign that her son would become a big musician, at least a musician. Mommy was singing. Vera knows what DeVito became. She talks to me. I can channel with the dead in that medium. And she says she doesn't like what she sees. The reckless life of DeVito, his cousins, his crew, HKN, DMW, and more. Some of the stuff I'm going to say, they the young delicate boys don't even have any knowledge because it was kept from them by their fathers who were all brothers. The late Isiaka Ademola Dechi, the players. This is a look, deep look into a family that most people don't know anything about. Davido even named himself Oma Bapaolo, meaning the child of the rich man. The kind of money that Jadilike has will stun you. You talk about if I give you an oil block and you invest it well in several businesses, you are very wise to do that. Many of you say you don't have money to start businesses. If they give you money for startups, how far would you take it? A good, good businessman will take it far. We know how that's done. But did, did you take it far? He took it too far. There was more than enough money. His children became reckless, throwing money around, using money 
to change things instantly. Money changes everything. They even use money, allegedly, to change the DNA test for Mitchell, the little girl DeVito fathered and abandoned. We've asked them for another DNA test. DeVito said, it's a dead issue. He even said, it's a story concocted by Camille Lunoya and the family. He told the Nigerian Tribune, it's now a dead issue. Or is it? DeVito contacted the little girl's mother, asking for a copy of the paternity test, something he should already have from four or five years ago, 2014. I have the paternity test. I actually posted it online. He can go there and look at it, but he can't alter it, which is what he wants to do. Alter it and make it positive so it can look like he's had a new test and the little girl is his. We can't force the little girl on you. The only way we can do that is if we have you in a court in America, where you're from, and order child support, order a U.S. passport for the child, visitation for you, the whole works. Davido has constantly abused the privilege, the privilege of being a dual citizen, of being a Nigerian and an American feeling that he can actually manipulate the system. Who will go to child support court in Nigeria? There's no such thing. Who will go to court with a big name like that? 200 paparazzis outside, no such thing. Who will go to court and then get a judgment for 100,000 Naira a month by a judge? When is other baby mamas are getting way more than that? His other baby mamas, <laughs> Sophia Mamadu. <laughs> not an independent girl she depends on davido for everything davido opened a clothing business and boutique for her fine some baby daddies want to help their baby mamas so they can provide very well for their children but independence is key aya labinger is very independent she works a small job earns a little and myself came yomalululunaya <laughs> to guardianship of her daughter to help her. Chapter two, Surviving Davido will be coming up soon. Share this video, share it on all your social platforms. I'm at Kemi Olunlayo on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at HNN Africa. <laughs> YouTube.com slash HNN Africa TV. It could be slash HNN Africa soon, but right now it's slash HNN Africa TV. This video is heavily copyrighted. Please do not download my work. If you download my work into a blog or another YouTube, I am not responsible for channels that are disabled. Breaking News just lost 1,800 videos because they're connected to a lot of copyright claims. If you get three copyright claims, YouTube deletes your account. Same with Instagram, same with Facebook. Remember, respect copyright. I'm Kemi Amalulu Olunlayer, Nigerian journalist, pharmacist, and PR specialist, community activist. The documentary, <laughs> Surviving Davido, will be cut into 30 minutes per chapter. Thank you for watching. January 15th, 2019. Copyright, HNN Africa, Communications Media.